times change, and we change with them. The liberties of a people depend on their own constant attention to its preservation. There is nothing more corrupting, nothing more destructive of the noblest and finest feelings of our nature, than the exercise of unlimited power. I believe that all the measures of the government are directed to the purpose of making the rich richer and the poor poorer. We admit of no government by divine right, believing that so far as power is concerned the beneficent creator has made no distinction amongst men, that all are upon inequality and that the only legitimate right to govern is an express grant of power from the governed. The plea of necessity, that eternal argument of all conspirators. Is one of the fairest portions of the globe to remain in a state of nature the haunt of a few wretched savages, when it seems destined by the Creator, to give support to a large population and to be the seat of civilization. He chains of military despotism, once fastened upon a nation, ages might pass away before they could be shaken off. Sound morals, religious liberty, and a just sense of religious responsibility, are essentially connected with all true and lasting happiness. All the lessons of history and experience must be lost upon us, if we are content to trust alone to the peculiar advantages we happen to possess. conscience, that vicegerent of God in the human heart, whose still small voice the loudest revelry cannot drown. A decent and manly examination of the acts of government, should not only be tolerated, but encouraged. The prudent capitalist will never adventure his capital, if there exists a state of uncertainty, as to whether the government will repeal tomorrow what it has enacted today. To Englishmen, life is a topic, not an activity.